everything so, that's going so on. So besides your, your GPS stick or staff, as we call it, yeah. what other type of technology would you use? I have a robotic total station, so when we get in tree cover, um, I my GPS, I don't think that's ever aired. It might this year. I'm going to use a little bit more of this. Um, I used it some last year. Mm -hmm. I don't think it ever aired. Let me rephrase that. So, okay. uh, but I do have a robotic robotic total station that I use. The picture that Laird put up of me last year, it's got a different prism. Mm -hmm. um, that's my G, that's that's my robot. So to the normal eye, you might not notice it. Instead of a yellow top, it's got a clear top. Ah, okay. okay. But to the normal eye, you'd never notice it because you wouldn't yeah. be looking for it. That said, um, I have a gyro that goes down hole of every borehole and that's about a half a million dollars. Yeah. So yeah. that's wow. about 10 feet long. So every single borehole that's, finished when we're done drilling a hole i drop a tool down i don't drop it down i lower it down <laughs> and it records the 3d dip or the 3d declination of that hole because no hole goes straight so right, for right. instance when you see sonic drilling in the money pit it starts here but the average drift is about two and a half feet away so the bottom hole will be about two and a half feet uh, yep. from the surface location and that's yep. important because if we hit wood um or yep. an open cavity like you've seen this year where we thought maybe we were into an original flood tunnel that becomes important because it gives us the exact X, Y, Z at depth of where that is, because exactly. yep. some holes run, believe it or not, about 10 feet. So oh, it can really wow. throw out the orientation if you're basing it just on the yeah. surface location. And, and that explains what we see on the diagrams and that we see on TV, where you see the holes kind of worming across the screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just to fill you guys in, so you'll see, so that's, you're looking at the 2D. We also have a 3D that I built that aired on drilling down a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I keep both up to date, uh, but we use the 2D because it's our working model and that's what we work from. Just for your guys' information, every time you see a little circle, that's 10 foot. So it's taking oh, a circle, okay. 20 foot. So if you see 15, okay. you know, that's 150 feet type of thing. I'm glad you brought that up because that I does. Know. Everybody asks us all the time about that. They're like, what are those little wormy things looking? I said, well, that's the drift of the, the drill. When they go down, it, it you know, will move around. And, <clears throat> and then you guys have to check it all the time to see exactly where it's going. And that makes absolute sense because you have to know, like you just said, if you hit that void, <clears throat> and you hit it at a certain level, you need to know how much drift there was so you know exactly where that, that void or wood or whatever it is is located. So now, now what you need to understand too is we that believe it or not, that gyro is one of the most important tools we have because that gyro really picks where we put the caissons. Because mm -hmm. again, surface location and bottom hole locations are can be 10 feet apart. Mm -hmm. And if we put a you know a very expensive case on over top the surface location, but the surface location isn't where we hit the anomaly or we hit the tunnel or the shaft or the open cavity, right. we're gonna miss the target altogether. So the gyro, in my opinion, is probably one of the most important tools, at least that I use. Mm -hmm. So And you're gyroing all the time. I gyro, yeah, we gyro yeah. all the time. Yeah. Like it's just, it's it keeps the, the, the drill program is probably the busiest program for me on the island. Right. One thing I can say too, is when I first came to the island, not knowing anything, uh, I'd, I'd have this background of watching Lord of the Rings back in the day. And, and then on those DVDs, there's extra material. And they used to show, um, what's his name, McKellen, Ian, I think it's Ian McKellen, uh, in this little, almost like golf cart thing, bombing around the set with this staff. And I saw this guy all over the island with this staff. <laughs> now, to me, it was like Gandalf, you know, it just bombing all over the place. And so that's what I started calling you privately when I when I you Dan Delph? I don't have a good yeah, beard. No, I, have, I have all kinds of nicknames on the island, but I'm picked at constantly. So no, but nice way. Oh it is. It's all in good fun. So oh yeah. Yeah. Most of it fun. Most it of seems time. like you get quite a team there. We are yeah yeah we get along if you could only but you should almost do a behind the scenes on us at we're like waiting for that. Show. We are so waiting for that show. <laughs> yeah, we actually ask our members, like, you know, like, what questions are you going to ask or what, what would you like to ask? And one of them is, you know, when do we get to see the blooper reel or when do we yeah, get to see the exactly. picture reel? <laughs> We'd love to see that, too, because I, I'm, I mean, for my I'm sort of the I guess I'm really the new guy. Not really. Not now. Yeah, like, this is your fourth four season. Years, yeah. This is my fit. Like, I've been there for five. You've been yeah, there four. four. But still. So we're in our own while. But still. And, and with my work, I'm often there for two or three days, not. Uh, five days like you folks yeah. because I have other things going on mm -hmm. but one thing that um, is you know I've worked in mining camps worked on many contaminated sites with big teams but I have never as I told Rick it is the most complex contaminated site I've ever worked on in many years the only difference is the contaminant isn't mercury it's gold and the other difference is that the people I work with 
are so much fun to work with. Mm -hmm. So it makes, makes being involved really, really easy. Um, and that's pretty unique from my perspective. So are any of you two, the two, one of the people that keep stealing Laird's phone and taking off these pictures that he was telling oh, that's, uh, that's Doug. Is that Doug? Was that Doug? Doug? Yeah, I, I think Gary might do that too. Yeah. Oh, I stole his phone one night. I did too. Yeah, we all do. Yeah. We all do. Laird leaves it around. It's his he, own fault. It's just hanging around, so you stick it in your pocket because it looks like yours. And you get home and you get this call from the holy cow. Got a phone. Yeah. Yeah, but that's Laird's fault. He leaves yeah. it everywhere. Yeah, yeah. But he, he mentioned something about that. He said, yeah, he goes, I got to not leave my phone laid around because I'll come back and find some <clears throat> odd pictures on it. From <laughs> yeah, we all taking pictures. I only did one thing, and I just posted his <laughs> favorite TV personality was Steve Gopto on his Facebook page. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, all I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>